guys, Frank here, your virtual general aviation aviator, and today I am at Mountain Air in North Carolina. I'm in the series SR-22, tail number 724 Mike Whiskey, as you can see. And this is custom scenery that you're looking at. Uh, I'm not sure who it's by, um, but, uh, but I'm enjoying it. So, Mountain Air is a airfield that's up in the mountains. Uh, I think it's northwest of, of Asheville, North Carolina, and it features a golf course right on the uh, landing strip, and of course, cabins that um, that you can rent. Uh, it's really a, a destination spot for those well-to-do. Uh, a well-qualified uh, people, <laughs> which uh, in real life I'm not one of them, but uh, but yeah. So we flew in and uh, and uh, played some golf, and now we are going to take a flight to Dalton, Georgia, which is roughly 142 miles as the crow fly. And this this will be a direct flight. Uh, let me show you the flight path here and get rid of the um, the the whatever the flight plan. Okay, so I am going over the Snowbird uh, MOA, but it's um, it's it covers a super large area and uh, it's not active. So. So yeah, uh, no real um, issues to deal with now. As you can see, Knoxville has a um, has claimed a bunch of of um, airspace that they have made um, Class D. So would be well above that at cruising altitude. Uh, I want to keep it low, but uh, I think if the highest peak, which it which should be Mount Everest, uh, where Mount Everest is over here at 7,000, if the highest peak uh, in our path is roughly about 6,600, then I think uh, since we're going west, uh, a cruising altitude of 8,500 would get us over the mountain pretty pretty good all right so enough of the um, the talk let's get started all right so first thing we're gonna do is jump into the cockpit and put on some headphones because gee whiz it's kind of loud right um, so let's see where's our headphone plug um, that reminds me, I meant to take the caps off. And thought I had buttons rigged up for that, but I guess they're not working. Alright, so with the series, if the tag hangs down, and if I click it now, I'm going to deploy the parachute. So with the series, to take the, the caps off, you need to be in the pilot seat and reach over there, and then you can take out, uh, take out the pin. I've heard uh, some folks say that they had trouble figuring that out, so I thought I'd throw that in. All right, uh, so fuel is done, and right now we have four, our mixture is four rich, and let's release our brake, hold the brake, and test the brake. Some working. All right. All right. So we are ready to rock to rock and roll. Uh, got our flight plan in, and one more thing that I need to do is just set our out our cruise altitude to the eighteen to the um, eighty five hundred that I just mentioned. Let me pop that on so you can see what I'm doing. So I actually <laughs> pop it out so I can see what I'm doing too, right? All right. So 
five hundred. All right. And I didn't get an ATOS, but I am uh, planning to use real weather. So, so yeah, I think um, I think I can pop that back in now, and should be almost good to go. Just need to get a a terminal ring and we really don't have a good nearest airport we've got Asheville which is about 30 miles away so I am going to use FS Global real weather as soon as it finished set the weather and it should start to set the weather at any moment and then I can pull it up and get um, weather from that. Um, it might even change the runway that I am supposed to use. Look, right now it looks like I got a two to three knot crosswind, which is um, which is not that concerning. All right, but um, but we also need to get an altimeter read. Uh, the field elevation for this airport is 4432. And I'm showing 4440, 4450 is my field elevation about right now. So let's, um, it's probably, it was probably set to 2992. But FS. Global real weather set the elevation right now as we speak. Okay, 3027 is what it's showing. So let's, um, let's dial that in. Let's go ahead and hit this guy. 3027. Four flight is showing 3031. And that would be probably, uh, that's two NCO. Uh, I guess they getting an ATOS or something, a uh, ASOS or something. Anyway, they're showing 3024. So we'll just split it and go. Let's jump back in here. 3025, okay. And 40. 32 that's inconsistent with, um, with everything with the field elevation that I'm seeing 4432 um, but I am at the high end of the field so like I'm going down here anyway I'm gonna leave it here all right so let's get some lights on should should I turn on my beacon earlier uh, or actually I don't have beacon go ahead and turn on my pedo heat and don't need an ice protection this is uh, this is a wet ice protection which means that it's uh, it spews out the glycol all right or uh, it uses alcohol to melt the ice, a form of alcohol. All right, so let's do this. And I was gonna turn down the volume on this thing. Let's see. But I don't see where I'm going yet. I can remember these things. Um, when you don't fly, in, that's much better. When you don't fly an airplane every day, then, um, and stuff tend to to get you know you have to re-familiarize yourself with it all right so engine temperatures let's see yeah just check that that um this power cycle right quick check do a mag check
Mags look good. And... getting voltage warning when I turn the alternator 2 off and let's see and alternator 1 okay and alternator 2 okay so yeah we are good all right brakes are off and make sure it's four let's start our takeoff row differential braking until we get enough wind going over the rudder. Rotate at 73. Rotate. Flaps up at 80. Flaps up didn't put flaps on that might be why it took us a while to get out of the runway to get airborne uh, thank god we had enough runway <laughs> let's see so we want um, cruise climb is Du, 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 du. Let's see, cruise climb, and I made some notes here. Uh, let's see, flaps up at 80, and fuel boost should be on. Yep, so good on the foot, fuel boost. Um, Going up to 85. Still on our runway head. So I'm gonna go ahead and and um, switch this guy to map here. Get a map on. And turn to the west hill and GPS is on the CDI turn our flight director on Let's engage our autopilot. Autopilot and nav and, and all right. So we're still on RO. So we haven't got that nav engaged yet. Okay, now we got nav engaged. All right, so should intercept our our course. Oh man, and we just blew through our altitude. So let's um, let's fix this um, vertical speed and uh, let's see, come down. And let's do 300 feet per minute down. Power back. And let's tell it to capture. All right. So altitude 8500 
and now we can increase our descent and get on down. Get, 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 get on down. All right. And, and right now I'm seeing 400, 500 feet per minute down. Um, if you guys are wondering how I get that, then I'm using the Avidon and the VSI bug says minus 500 feet. Out bug is 8,500. Um, and I really should set my head in. So let me pop that in. That look like I'm making a turn. So that's fine. Actually, I am because if I look at the the GTN, you see I'm turning. I'm intercepting my course now. All right. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So I reset the heading bug bug again when once we straighten up. Cirrus, the Cirrus SR22, and this is the um, this is the turbo uh, injected the TN. Um, yeah, I think this is what well, this one's fuel injected. This was not the normal the normally aspirated version, so I can get up to some high flight levels. But I like I enjoy the mountains now. That's a dangerous prospect in real life because in a single engine aircraft, the higher you are, the more time you have to work through checklists if something goes wrong. All right, let's get our, our landing lights off, leave our strokes on, pedal heaters on, no ice protection needed. Um, and I'm not going to worry about I'm not going to worry about cabin temperatures um, well I can at least turn the thing on um, but I really don't have that to worry about because I'm in a sim <laughs> and my focus is flying the aircraft you know uh, in fact as you can see, I really don't do a good job of managing the radios uh, when I'm simming, uh, at least when I'm recording now. I do manage them when I'm doing a pilot edge flight. And I, I don't know why I have, have no problem talking to controllers when I'm doing pilot edge, but I have all kinds of problems talking to controllers when I'm doing that sim. Um, and I think that's because with Pilot Edge, I can look at my, I can look at my chart. I can look at the chart and see what frequencies I need to, I need to, to tune to. Um, and with that sim, I have to look elsewhere, but I did find some place, I did find a chart, a website that I can check out that shows me at a glance what frequencies that sim is on. And I just discovered that today, so I might be able to use that a little bit more often. All right, so let's um, let's get this guy leaned out because I'm still four, and I've got I did like I said I made some notes here. So um, so in route, I want to be for. For best power, I want to be. <clears throat> I want my EGT to be uh, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, Richard Peak, and 
and I want well let's go ahead and, and bring back that power set and for power um, in I need to be uh, let's see touchdown stall speed in route uh, I thought I wrote down a, oh yeah uh, my power set need to be between 55 and 85 percent so I'm at a crew I'm at a good cruise percent right now um, I should be shooting for about 30 about 29.6 inches of um, uh, manifold pressure uh, manifold pressure so let me Increase that manifold pressure and then we can lean it out. All right, so let's lean it out. And why don't I use the lean assist? This, I think this guy does have a lean assist. All right, looking for first peak. two peaks that I'm looking for. Peak detected. Looking for last peak. peak. And let's, I want to go rich. So I'm looking for last. And it says peak detected. First peak again. So All right, peak detected. All right, so I'm happy right there. And my cylinder head temperatures should be, um, let's see, cylinder head temperatures. I think I got something regarding that in my notes. And that's not good. Okay. So, I don't think it like that. Okay, so let's let's stick with that for the moment. See how the engine responds. Um, now I'm at 95% power, so my power went way up, and I need to be let's put this power back. Let's go to 85%. All right, so that gives me best power, and and if the lines are peak, Then yeah, so let's try this. Let's try this and see what happens. And um, and the boost should go off after 30 minutes of flying. Um, a 30 minutes of cruise, that is. So that's what I'm looking for. All right, so boost is still on. I should switch tanks. Um, well, I don't have to switch tanks quite yet. Okay. So, I'm still good. All right. And let's look. take a look outside. 
let's see, exterior view. Um, whoops, that didn't work. All right, that didn't work either. Outside temp, okay. Exterior doors, fly by. Let's try that one. Look at those mountains. Gorgeous. And this is X plane. And it's and you know, I think it's gorgeous. I know that it doesn't quite compare to Microsoft Flight Simulator. But I feel like the the aircraft is stable. Uh, the flight sim for me is stable. As is Microsoft Flight Simulator, but the I I just I just don't quite enjoy flying uh, the airplanes in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I do enjoy looking out the window, but I get much more enjoyment flying in the X plane. Um, okay, so it is what it is, uh, and each sim. I've come to realize that, that, you know, that I don't purport that one sim is any better than the other. Um, I have, I'm through with that debate, and I think that whatever sim you fly is the sim you fly. I just happen to fly x -Plane, and that's my preference. Um, I know a lot of guys still fly a lot of guys have um, have moved on and do fly Microsoft Flight Sim for a time, which is fine. Okay, enough of that. All right. So I am in cruise, and we've got um, we've got a ways to go, guys. We've got um, let's see. Back, we've got a hundred three nautical miles left to our destination. Uh, we 75 knots, 175 knots over the ground. Um, and wow, this hadn't changed yet. Yeah, okay, there we go. And so I am going to enjoy the mountains and I will check back in with you guys shortly. As um, pretty much as our as I get closer. All right. But I am over the MOA now, so at least we can see that. You know, I, I really love the GTN. It makes my situational awareness so much easier than the, than the 530 uh, or, or even the E1000. Uh, I'm sorry, the G1000 and foot, as far as I'm concerned. I'd rather have the uh, the GTN 750 than the than the than the Garmin uh, E1000. Anyway, that's me. All right. So so yeah. All right. Oh yeah. Before I do that, uh, let me just pop this out and show you guys the map that's uh, that comes with the the Avidon. So I do get a map here, and uh, that's actually my terrain awareness system that I'm looking at now. And this is my in route map, and I do get, I think, great situational awareness here. Um, so yeah, I even like this for me better than I like the E1000. Uh, in some cases, the 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 default X plane E one thousand just does not provide enough contrasting colors for me. These are the diamonds here, a traffic, and let's see if I see that traffic on the on the GTN. Uh, let's see, let's sure that we got traffic turned on and go back and take it a minute to populate uh, 
I don't see the traffic, but I am running traffic global. So there is traffic abound. Um, just not just not seeing it. And one thing that I tend to do to double check is turn on the labels and the labels will would often verify that traffic global is running and running like it should. Alright, so let's get rid of this guy. Get rid of this guy. Let's see if we see any traffic in the labels out. And something has to be within 50, I think it, it used to be 90 nautical miles. I think it's only 50 now. <clears throat> and what I said, what I thought was traffic in this map may not be traffic at all because it's not moving. Um, so the little pink diamonds may be something else. Um, but... I think it's control F11. Traffic global. Yes, I'm not seeing any. Yeah, it's just right now nothing's in in um, nothing's in range to be picked up. So, but it is running. Okay. All right, so the labels are on, and I, like I said, I would chat back in with you guys later. Okay, <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Looks like I'm only about uh, 13 nautical miles from my destination. Um, so I am really close, right? And just checking that on the four flight app. And I see that four flight has me, uh, let's see, it says 26 nautical miles. Um, by, by checking it this way, um, let's see, I'm still seeing 25 miles, but, oh yeah, yeah, 25 nautical miles, 13 minutes, duh, whoops, that wasn't what I wanted to do, so, yeah, so we can, um, get ready to think about our approach, so, the biggest thing that we want to do um, is want to make sure I defrost this on it if it's cold and we descend it into warmer air. Um, don't have to worry about carb heat or anything like that. And we also want to make sure that we keep our mixture adjusted. So I am going to monitor the engines on this descent. On this descent. Um, I never did turn my boost off, <laughs> and I should have turned it off um, about 30 minutes in the cruise, but I guess it didn't hurt anything to have it on. Um, I think I read that as long as it didn't need it, it didn't need it. Um, but yeah, let's see, I also am seeing in my display some information <clears throat> Excuse me. Some information about my de uh, destination: uh, 22 nautical miles, 11 minutes, um, and the bearing information. I don't think is applicable to this location. Well, see, the bearing might be. Uh, uh, no, no, the VOR information isn't. Okay, um, so, so yeah, change the VOR1 and that, yeah. All right, so, still too far out to look for my 
to look for my airport but I can start thinking about what I need for the descent. Now I've already tuned my radios so I've already put in the ADOS. Oh man, I am losing frames. My frames have just died. Uh oh, and so is my engine. All right, so let's uh, let's look at our lean, and that may be what the engine sound. Let's see. Traffic is on. Um, engine not range engine all right so Yeah, so <clears throat> by not follow, not monitoring my lean, my mixture, then uh, I was losing power and had gotten down to roughly a hundred, hundred ten knots, sixteen nautical miles, eighty-five hundred feet in the air, airport is at 700 feet so I got some getting down to do so let's uh, let's go to VS but first let's go down here and make this uh, 1500 actually we'll make it 1700 and VSI uh, come down <clears throat> at a thousand fifteen hundred and make that a reality okay so this uh, okay and then doing a 1500 foot per minute descent one moment okay I'm getting over a cold let's see all right and this set of mountains are the last ones that I see on my chart um, so if you look at the chart, you see them just off the the peaks, just off the passenger. Um, looks like I'm seeing them off the passenger side in the chart. But oh no no no, I'm actually seeing them off the right side. Uh, Thirty thirty one hundred feet peaks. So. Coming down. Oh, I didn't know that I had a pop out for that. Live and, oh, I didn't know I had a pop out for that. Okay, live and learn. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so it's popped up. I want to pop it back in now. So I guess clicking that pops it out without a frame. Okay, so I imagine the same thing is true for that. Yep, it is. Interesting. Live and learn. 
Okay. So, let's go ahead and turn our landing lights on. Eight nautical miles from the airport. Should be able to see it out there. And I do. Winds were calm. So, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. I'm going to come in on a 45 for runway 14. And let's see. So, in order to do that, let's uh, release our. our And let's make this call. Dalton Traffic, Sierra 724, Mike Whiskey is six miles to the northeast inbound for runway 14, Dalton. All right, so let's find that airport again. There it is. All right. So, as soon as we get over this building here, then we'll make our turn on the 45 towards the airport. Pattern is 1700. And we'll make a call at three miles. Alright, so we'll make this turn. We're three miles out now. Doubt in traffic. Sierra's 724 Mike Whiskey is three miles inbound on the 45 for runway 14 Doubton. Let's get on down the pattern. And let's see, two nine nine two was our was our. Let's get this set. Okay, uh, two nine nine two. I think it's what. So I'm a little bit low. Doubt in traffic. Sierra seven two four. Mike Whiskey is. On downwind runway 14, Dalton. So the runways are 3, 2, and 1, 4. Mixture 4, fuel boost on. Downwind. All right, and we're ready to turn base. Let's turn the flight director off. Down traffic, Sierra seven two four Mike Whiskey turning left base runway one four Dalton. Get the help, the feel in sight here so that we can make this turn correctly. And get a little slow here. Let's see, I'm thinking, let's see, approach should be 90. Bit high for this turn. 
Yeah, I'm at 17. I'm way too high. This may be a go around, guys. Okay, flaps. Go ahead and go flaps four. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get down in a mile. Flaps up. Go around. Dalton traffic. Sarah 724 Mike Whiskey going around. Dalton. Wind should be calm. Doubt and traffic, Sierra seven two four Mike Whiskey turning left crosswind Doubt. Down traffic, Sierra 724, Mike Whiskey, turn in, left downwind, runway 14, Dowden. All right. Get parallel with the runway. So I downloaded somebody else's views and quite frankly, um, looks like there's a toggle. If I hit this once, I get an outside view, which is cool. I wonder what else does that work on? Well, it's not working anymore. Okay, I'm a beam, so let's, uh, oh man, I've gotten up to 3,000, can you believe that? Doubt and traffic, Sierra 7, Sierra 724, Mike Whiskey is extending downwind, Doubt. That was smart. Some turbulence there. So we it's hard getting down in an airplane, that's for sure. Doubt and traffic, Sierra 724, Mike Whiskey turning left base, runway 14, Doubton. And I don't hear anybody else in the pattern, so I really shouldn't have anything to really be concerned about. And let's find that runway. And let's see. I'm going to make the turn down. Traffic Sierra 724 Mike Whiskey turning final runway 14 Dalton. Okay, so I made the turn just off feel. Alright, let's get this guy trimmed. Try to get her on down, get that sight picture with. 
that I like. All right, so 500, and the extended downwind gave me a chance to get down. Doubting traffic, Sirius 724, Mike Whiskey on final, runway 14, Doubting, four stop. Okay, so let them know my intentions. And I think eight is the number that I'm looking for. And power off on touchdown. All right, so find me a touchdown point. I got it. The dark areas on the runway, actually. Okay. Final flaps. Let's try to find that number out to the end. And that was not the best landing. Come on, look at that. This is. I know you guys can't see what I was doing with my feet, but I was giving it uh, left toe break and full left rudder, and I was still moving to the right. So I'm not sure why and that's still happening um let's see oh now now what okay now i don't have to give it rudder because i because because this is differential steering so giving it rudder is not going to make a hill of difference at slow. Um, yeah, so, but uh, I'm not going to report that, that little runway incursion. I'm not sure I actually ran off the runway either. But I think I was not managing I don't know all right let's get off the runway and clean up FLT who knows what FLT is Flaps, lights, and we just need to turn the strobes off in this case. Um, go ahead and turn our pedo heat off. Flaps, lights, and trim. Let's get it trimmed to take off. Okay. All right and transponder is fine okay that's one thing i like about the the uh, come on it's one thing i like about the um gtn 750 it would do some of the managing the it, for you all right, so we just go up to this red and white building. Uh, do you guys want to go down to one of those angles? Uh, we just go up to this red and white building. Um, I don't know what building that is, um, but we'll call it the FBO in this case. And I don't know if Dalton has an FBO. 
that with all the uh, manufacturing concerns they have for carpet and flooring and whatnot, wouldn't be surprising if they don't have a layup to uh, to accommodate the executives. All right, so we are here. So let's set our brakes and let's lean her on out. Well, first, let's get that fuel pump off because she would not cut off with it on. All right, now we'll lean it. All right. And avionics and every, all my switches can go off. Let me turn my ignition off. And let's turn this fan off. And uh, we're going to take the key out and turn off our battery. All right. And we are done, guys. <laughs> oh, I hope you enjoyed the flight as much as I did. <laughs> I really do. And welcome to Dalton, Georgia. Until next time, guys. Oh, well, before we finish, let's just look at that. Let's just go back and look at that landing. How about that? Yeah, let's just do that. Let's see. How far back do we need to go? Gee whiz. Let's Short see. final runway one four. Yeah. All right. There we go. And... And a short final here, runway one four. Found on out your flaps come in. I want that 80 over the threshold. And I was drifting off the center line, so I'm trying to get back on the center line. Um, flare up maybe a tad too early. And not sure I had my power off when I touched down um, uh, back to idle when I touched down. And I didn't have the runway incursion, so so I don't have to worry about. <clears throat> Excuse me, I wasn't sure whether I left any marks in the grass or not, but I didn't. At least not yet. Let's see if we can get started without running into the grass. Yep, there's the grass. Oh, three wheels in the grass. <laughs> now, the nose wheel is is turning. I don't know. But the nose wheel should be free casting. Anyway, so until next time. Welcome back now, dear.